was for entertainment purposes only. And if you want true legal advice, contact your own lawyer. So what the, the allegations are that because they got this show went so late, they did, they just couldn't leave. <laughs> they had to wait for the three hours for Madonna to come on. And apparently she's having some ailments. They're, that's the allegations. Um, and that they missed their train and they're in New York. They couldn't get back home. They did not. The, the show ended at 1 a.m. And uh, they it also affected their work and their school plans. And they're suing for breach of contract, loss of value, false advertisement, and negligent misrepresentation. Now, I don't know what the I'm. You know, this could be a case or no case, but I don't know. I'm not quite sure about that. But there's another action just like this filed in Florida by all other fans that are claiming the same thing that they're sh- she's showing up so late that it's it's basically you know it's a breach of contract and loss of that false advertisement that the, the show starts at this time apparently negligent misrepresentation and we're going to see where this goes well, it's I, interesting i'd be curious to look at the language in the ticket now in the past, we've talked about waivers and liability and, and how on the back of the ticket, it'll say something like uh, any accident that happens here, the owners of the venue are not liable for injuries. And as Fred has said repeatedly, yeah, those are not those aren't valid. You can't waive. Negligence well, well, to somebody let me else. back up. Be careful. Say that. They're difficult. They're difficult. Yes. Yeah. It, it's not an ironclad. This is not. Right. Well, the same thing, I think, would be or a similar idea would be true here. I'd be curious to see on the ticket if the. Start time is listed as a guaranteed start time or a scheduled yes. start time or an anticipated start time. And if there's any language in the ticket or anywhere else that says, you know, these these times are subject to change. And I'll give you a classic example. Take football. Right. The last game of the year. Now, I know we're nationwide and, and I'm still mourning the 49ers loss of the Super Bowl. I don't want to offend anybody. But Me yes, too. That, that was was hard. But I, I like the Chiefs, too. I like the Chiefs. I, I, I do. And I was very happy for Andy Reid, the coach of the Chiefs. But I'm thinking to the 49ers last game of the year against the Seahawks, I believe it was. And it was a scheduled start time. It was supposed to be a 130 game on the West Coast. But because of. Because of the importance of the game and how much was riding on it. I mean, if the 49ers win, they're the top seed. If they lose, they're the fifth seed and have to play all the playoff games on the road. ESP, no, uh, NBC, Football Night in America on NBC, and the NFL changed the start time of the game from 1.30 to 5.30, so they get national coverage. Yeah, the league reserves the right to flex those games. Yeah. Right. So what and, if you're a season ticket holder, you, play, you come all the way down from, who knows, Reno or Las Vegas or whatever, and you're there, the 1.30 game, and you just can't make the late game because you have to be to work the next morning I know, or whatever. Right? But okay. you're put on notice that these things, these times are subject to change. Well, I want to see what the ticket says in this one. Is, yeah. it, is it subject to change? Because, look, if there is... If there is one class of entertainer that would be prone to being late for whatever reason, it's musicians. <laughs> so I, I, I just and, and to file a class action lawsuit to certify a class. Look, if you individually think you got hosed by this, call the call the venue and ask for your two hundred and fifty dollars back for your ticket. But but Paul it, McCartney was an hour late when I saw him. I didn't complain. No, yeah, I was three just hours glad to see him. Kinda, three hours is getting up way. there. That's, That's not yeah. that happens a lot of times. They definitely show up late. I, I, I don't know if I've ever seen one. Go ahead, Cal. But I do have a question, and that is I, I was surprised to hear about this. A Somebody paid money to see Madonna? Oh, I mean, come on. What's yeah. going on? What is going on in the world we live yeah, in? I know. <laughs> but, you know, I always say, well, why didn't you just get up and leave if you want? But it's interesting how their whole next day was affected by this. And, and it's actually a class action. It's not just one. They want to bring multiple. So I, I would also be curious. So they're, they're bringing a class action. And probably, let, let's say the venue seats, what, 20,000 people, just hypothetically. So I guess the class action would be upon, would be representing a class of 20,000 people. I would be curious to know how many of the 20,000, when they get notice of this, want to opt out of the class because aside from being, as opposed to being upset by this, they were actually happy that even though she showed up late, she still gave them a full three-hour show like they paid for. It. And we'll deal with it. And it was an awesome show. We thought it was great. On a bad knee. On a bad knee. So I, I, I'm, I'm, you know what? Leave if you're not happy. I, you that's know? what that's I leave. If you're not but happy. if you leave, can you go up to the box office and say, hey, dude, I've know. got to go. I want my money back. I don't know. 
I, I, well, that's what you get for buying a Madonna ticket. I don't think oh, that there's sure you're right, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's anything preventing you from going up and asking. Yeah. <laughs> Whether uh, they give you anything, it's another issue. Right, right. So I guess you know what. Speaking of concerts and 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 stuff like that, and entertainment, the Lion King. Uh, now this is an interesting, supposed. It's not a case. Usually we talk about ones that have been filed, yeah. but a, a, in in California, in Berkeley, a poor. You know, it was a very a lower end uh, financial. What's the word? I mean, the, the, the not it's not the rich section of Ca- of Cal Berkeley area had a had a school. They had a fundraiser. It's a grammar school, and they and they showed the Lion King so the kids would be entertained while they did this little fundraiser. It was a, it was a parents' night out. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's yes. exactly right. And they're trying to just to get some money for the kids. And and guess what? They get a they get a note from a licensing company from Disney saying you owe us two hundred fifty dollars for illegally screening the movie. Because guess what? There are rules and, and regulations uh, that say you have to pay in order if you're screening in a public place. Exact And quote, it says as follows. Here's the general rule. Anytime a movie shown outside of the home, legal permission is needed to show it as it's considered a public performance. That's an email which was obtained by CNN from the Disney company, well, it's, it's one of Disney's representatives. Especially if admission is charged. That's exactly, because, well, right. or they're raising money. Right. And um, a movie shown for any entertainment reason, even if it's in the classroom, they're saying it, it's, it's you need to obtain a public performance license. And generally speaking, I know that's the law. You, you, yeah. you got to be very careful in, in you know, oh, we're going to do a fundraiser and we're going to show The Lion King. You you really cannot do that. But but here's what's what's something that's interesting. Now, this is what I want to get to. And so it's 250 bucks. So, they, so some people have said we're going to donate the 250, some parents, and, and it's all taken care of. But they made a stink, and they want to pound Disney. You know, I'm going to say that the godfather of the children's movies. And, 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 and guess what the argument is? And this is what just throws me uh, in a loop. Their argument is because Disney's rich, they should not have to follow. Disney is not... Uh, uh, under that law because not really rich. harmed they would say because well, of their wealth well, they don't yeah. have to the law needs to be followed but for disney it's an exception in fact one of the parents said as follows they said as follows it's just so appalling that an incredibly wealthy corporation is having its licensed agents chase after the pta and then they go on and say this is just i'm sorry but i know we're politically this is neutral. berkeley this is berkeley i, yeah. I know we're politically neutral we would be uh, enthusiastic about paying the license fee to Disney if Disney was willing to have their properties reassessed and pay some additional property taxes because under Prop 13, they're paying taxes from 1979 and they should be paying higher property taxes. And so they bring a property tax issue in to the fact that they're showing a Disney movie in a public place and not getting the property. Which is a hot issue in California yeah, right now. It's an it initiative is. on the ballot. But, but still, but, but come how on. Did, but this ended up nicely at the end. Did you hear the end? Well, that? the end was someone paid for it. Uh, someone, became... the chairman of Disney, the CEO of Disney said, I'll, I'll, I'll cover that cost. Yeah, no and that's, that's smart. Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. Disney said, no, you have to still pay it, right. but we're going to cover the cost right? because you got to follow the law. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if you're a billionaire or you're worth a buck. If that's the law, you follow the law. I, I agree. I absolutely agree with that. But I also think that the Parents making a stink about it and saying what they said were justified in saying, look, if you're going to say that we have to follow the law and pay your 250 bucks, even though you're this wealthy company and 250 bucks is literally nothing to you, then we are going to make you follow the law to jump through every dang hoop to get it, including having the public know that you're coming after us. I can tell you that Disney recently, or in the last couple of years, has run, in, they've run into an issue where their legal department is doing things that maybe the upper echelon doesn't. They went after some guy who made a fan film for Star Wars that had permission from George Lucas to do it and then after it was published went and got all they they made a claim on it on youtube that's right and lucas had to step in and say hold on folks i said he could do it and they backed off i'm just waiting for disney because they own a lot of sports stuff to finally come in and say you know that any reproduction or rebroadcast of any accounts of this game is expressly prohibited when you're sitting around the water cooler saying hey did you see that long bomb in last night's game and then get a cease and desist because you talked about the game i don't know that'd be crazy disney's credit they're protecting their turf that's exactly right and where does it end we'll be back 
third hour, right? Yep. More leader. Law Talk is coming up right here. Don't go away. Go to the website, radiolawtalk.com. That's radiolawtalk.com. 